right there. We'll go ahead and get started. We're missing um, several, but hopefully it'll trickle in, and I want to be mindful of your time. I'm sure the children are somewhere, hopefully sleeping. That would be nice. Um, thank you for joining us. We wanted to just take an opportunity to um, cast a vision for you about what School Lay Days is, what we're trying to accomplish. I know you heard me say it to a certain extent in the interview, but now that we actually have our feet on the ground and the program is up and running, I want to make sure that we're just on the same page and also give you opportunity to ask any questions that you have now that things are running um, and just hopefully partner together because that's that's our heart and our goal. So we'll open in prayer and uh, we'll get started. God, we love you. Thank you for the opportunity we have to come together and to partner as we in, um, in the nurturing admonition of you, God, as we seek to teach and train our children. Um, that's a high and holy calling. Thank you for these families entrusting their students to us one day a week. And I pray that together um, um, you would be honored and glorified in our partnership, in our school, in our families, God. And in our children, we have no idea what you're going to do with them, but I pray that you would be shaping and molding. God, capture their hearts now while they're young and prepare them for a life of service, God. I pray that they would be surrendered to you and eager to serve you with their lives. Bless our conversation in these next few minutes. In Jesus' name, amen. So it is meant to be a conversation. I don't want this to be anything super formal. I'm sorry, I just haven't gone home and changed my clothes yet today. <laughs> Um, but we call this a practicum, just an opportunity for it to be really practical. So that's the intention. There's a PowerPoint and you have copies of the slides in front of you if that helps and just for your reference. Um, so we're just gonna walk through this. Please feel free at any time if something's not clear, you need clarification, just let me know. Um, I just wanna remind you again of our mission statement. As Legacy Academy, we exist to partner with families like you and churches in this area to shape the hearts and minds of students by entrusting them with a Christ-centered classical education. That's why we're here. That's what we're trying to do. It's a little bit unique in how you partner with us, but I hope you want the same thing. I hope that you're here for that same reason. Um, and again, thank you for entrusting your children to us. Um, so just by way of introduction, these faculty members are not here except for Mr. Brittingham, who's in the back. He teaches um, our Bible and history classes here at the school. So I think it's good for you to know who your child's teachers are on a Friday. Hopefully you've met them. Um, but Josh teaches Bible and history. Lauren Smith does a lot of the teaching throughout the day. She does the art and music combo as well as math and science. Um, Sierra Elkett, if those of you that are connected with Sussex County Bible Church, um, she attends here. She does the nature study and book club with her students. Mrs. Loudon does Latin, and then I take the spelling bee slash phonics. Sue and I tag team for that hour. Um, so those are the faculty here on our school. You can go on our school's website and look at their pictures and bios, but just so you know, these are the amazing people that God has brought to Legacy Academy, and I'm honored to work with them and humbled. Um, they are excellent teachers. They love your students. They love the subjects that they're teaching, and so it's a joy to share that with your students on Friday. Um, just so you have an idea of what a day looks like, because I know many of you aren't here with us on a Friday, um, we start all together here, K through H, um, with what we call opening assembly. This is our time just to come together, um, and the intention really is worship. So we sing together, we pray together, um, we recite lots of things. Sometimes we recite our prayers, um, we recite the doxology, we do pledges. Um, and then you've probably seen in your students' little assembly books, we have recitations for all the subjects that we cover throughout the week. Um, so those are just good nuggets of information that we want your kids to know. And we try to make it fun. A lot of them have chants or jingles or rhymes that go with it. And we recite those. You may be surprised already what your kids have just picked up even just one day a week. Feel free to use that assembly book as a resource. You don't have to do anything more with it, but if you want to, you can work on those. That's just good core truth for them to know in those subjects. We also have lots of call-outs in that assembly book. Um, those are definitely little parenting gold nuggets that you could use, because we're kind of conditioning your children. When we say quorum, they say Deo. We live before the face of God. And it really is amazing. It has not taken them long. We say lines, they say, speedy, straight, and silent. Now, whether they actually do it or not is slightly different, so we're still working on that. Um, yes, they know what to say, which that one probably doesn't work for you homeschoolers, because I know you don't 
usually gather yourself in the line, but it works really well here um, on a Friday. So again, those recitations, those call-outs, use them to your advantage. Those prayers and those songs over the course of this year are things they'll become very familiar with. Um, that's about 15-20 um, minutes. Um, we always end our opening assembly of time together beholding beauty which is a very scolay thing to do, but before we rush into our day and cover all of that great content, I'm gonna pause for a moment, because I really feel strongly if we don't stop and listen or look for the beauty that God has placed in the world around us, we're gonna miss it. So we take time every morning in Legacy Academy. We behold beauty in arts and poetry and music and nature. So Fridays is kind of a smattering. You never know what you're gonna get, but we'll try to touch on all of those. But it's amazing to me. Um, the kids have done really well. We put up a piece of great art, and we just ask them to sit and look at it for 30 seconds. Not the same. <laughs> Probably feels like the longest 30 seconds of their little yeah. lives. Or to sit still and listen to a piece of music. We don't really discuss it. That's not the goal. It's not. It's strictly just art appreciation, music appreciation, but to behold that beauty. So that's always a question you could ask them at the end of the day. What beautiful thing did you behold today? Um, last week it was butterfly and dragonfly wings, if you want to follow up on that one. But finding beauty in unusual places is also something we'll come back to on a Friday. So after that we dismiss. They all have three morning classes. The classes are roughly 55 minutes. And again, I think you're familiar. We have a K through two composite class and then a third through eight composite class. So they rotate. The older ones spend most of their time here in this room. The littles mostly live in the other building. We learned the hard way moving them back and forth is difficult, especially for those little guys. So it actually helps to keep them a little more stationary. Um, but that's their morning and they'll rotate between those classes of Bible history, art and music, math and science, uh, book club nature study, and language arts or phonics and language study. <laughs> um, they've been doing really well with that. I think that they're enjoying the subjects. Check their assembly book folder for random papers. There's no homework necessarily that comes home, nothing they have to do, but you can use that to just start a conversation. Hey, what did you, what is this picture that you drew today in art class? Those are just touch points um, and also a springboard if you want it to be that, to just jump into the next week or to review, which would be great. Um, we pause in the middle of the day for lunch and recess. Um, I'll admit things were a little chaotic at the beginning of the year. We were trying to eat and play with all K through eight together. Um, I think last week was the first week we tried to divide and conquer. So the littles play while the older ones eat and then we swap and that worked much better. The K through two generally play the same way. They play together and then they're not in danger of the big ones throwing footballs and things like that. So I hope you know this is brand new for us. We've never done this before. So we're trying to work out all the kinks as we go and I think that was a good improvement. I hope everybody enjoyed lunch and recess a little bit more. We come back in the afternoon and have two more classes and then it does get a little, a little wild and crazy I have to admit. Um, we've got 35 students and a few adults with the task of completely tearing down and resetting this building for church on Sunday and cleaning as well. So organized chaos is I think the best way I could describe it. They all, they're getting there. They know their jobs, they know what's expected, they have their little routine and, and we're getting that job done. Um, we'll come back to this, that is definitely a place where we need parents to be involved and we'll mention the schedule in just a second. But, um, you could also follow up. Your child may be doing a chore here that you didn't know they could do at home, and it's wonderful. <laughs> um, so we really appreciate their help. They've had a good spirit about that. Um, in the last couple of weeks, though, we have pulled the K through two out. We've learned that much more cleaning gets done much better without the littles. Yeah. No offense. Um, I would love to work them back <laughs> in no some offense. sense. Yeah. I think. No. Um, no, so they love yeah. mid reset time because they get an extra little recess. Um, I would love to work in some age appropriate responsibilities throughout the year, but for right now there's just so many of them and not enough adults to really manage them well. Um, so just know your little guys have some play time right now, which isn't the end of the world. Um, but then after all the work is done, we come back and we want to make sure that we close the same way that we started. Um, so we sing together, we do some more recitations, but probably the most important part of closing assembly is collect and connect. 
So this is always that infamous question, what did you learn today? Crickets, <laughs> blank <laughs> stares. Except it's more than that, because they're actually very eager to share what they learned. But we want to take it a step further and say, what did that teach you about God? That's really where the crickets come in, I'll be honest with you. But that's a skill that we have to teach them and a strength that we have to develop in their character. We want them looking for God in every one of their subjects. So I know for a fact, our faculty are pointing that out in every class. Everything that's taught is being pointed back to God. Collect and connect is a good gauge. Are they getting it? So you can do the same thing at home. Ask them what they're learning. And if they give you some good content, take it a step further. What does that teach you about God? Sometimes you got to work harder for that. Sometimes it's really obvious. Other times it's not. But it almost always generates a really good conversation. And we don't always have all the time in the world to follow that conversation through, but you do. So follow up with that and point your children back to God. I hope you know that's why they're here from our perspective. So continue to have those conversations and build that um, strength in them. It's a really good thing. And then you probably hear us sing the doxology and we're dismissed. That's our day from 8.30 to 3.30. That's kind of what's going on if you drop in at any point. <laughs> that's what you'll see in a snapshot. Um, I wanted to park for a minute, not just about what Legacy Academy is all about, but what is this crazy word, skole, and what is this idea? Um, it's actually a Greek word um, that means leisure, and the Romans borrowed the Greek word and developed the idea of skola, which is where we get our English word school from. Okay? There's not a direct English translation, but the best way I can describe it is respite <coughs> learning. And this is something that I have to be honest was new to me. I homeschooled for three years and I was introduced to it um, through some friends, did a lot of reading and studying. And honestly, what attracted me to school A, I have to admit, was my lack of it as a homeschool parent. I did not feel restful <laughs> in my schooling. Um, um, if you talk to my other homeschool friends, they would say, oh, Karen doesn't homeschool, she schools at home. I was <laughs> totally that. I'm like, you get out of bed, you dress, we're going to start on time, we're going to follow the schedule, I'm going to assess you. And I, I struggled with the idea of letting it be restful. I did. Um, and so what drew me to Scolay was the humility to say, man, I need this. That is not who I am naturally as a person. I need that in my life. I need to read these people. I need to watch how they school. And that's kind of where the journey began. Um, I think I've shared with most of you that became Southern Delaware School A Group, a homeschool group that I launched two years ago. Um, and then now it looks like School A Days with Legacy Academy. So that's a whole other story of God's grace and journey in my life. But I want you to know that that's the goal we're striving for. Fridays is this idea of school day, is restful learning. It is an attitude, and it's also an atmosphere that we're trying to cultivate. So I want our teachers teaching from a place of rest. And there's a great book for homeschoolers by Sarah McKenzie called Teaching from Rest. It's an excellent little snapshot of what school day is. Um, <coughs> but the students also need to learn from a place of rest. We don't want them stressed out about their content. We want them to enjoy that process. And if the student and the teacher are both in a place of rest, then there's an atmosphere. There's just this environment that's created. And then there's aesthetics that go along with it to help the space look and feel beautiful and things like that. But really what we're striving for is contemplation and reflection. We don't want to just rush through the content or give them the content. We really want them to sit with it and chew on it for um, so that obviously takes time. And especially with the older students, we want to have conversation and discussion. It's not just a lecture where I'm giving them information. I want them engaged with it. So even saying that, all of that is a very high goal to aspire to. Are we doing that perfectly? I have to say no. Again, this is brand new. We're figuring out how to do that well. But that's our goal. We want to teach from a place of rest. We would love for them to learn at a, from a place of rest. We want this to be a place of rest when they come. So we try to um, do that with intention. There's purpose. We don't cover all that we could. Um, we can't. I would rather do a little bit well and deep and really take time than to just cover all that we could. That's intentional. 
Now, I think it bears repeating and, and explaining this doesn't mean idleness. It's not like we just come and we love Jesus and we sit around and make flower wreaths and we don't do anything all day. That's not restful learning. Again, as you really study um, the Greek etymology of the word, it's not leisure versus work. But this is a different kind of work. This is an enjoyable, restful work. So for us Americans, I would say it's a complete culture and mind shift for us. And I put that, I think I did, there you go. It's contrary to how most of us were raised, how we were taught, how just we're conditioned as Americans. Um, it's countercultural. So it's going to take work. It's going to feel weird and it's going to be hard. And we need the community of accountability to try to stay in that tense spot of resting in it. But that's our goal when your student comes on a Friday. Um, so I would say help us to achieve that goal. This is a worthy goal. We're not doing it perfectly. We're making changes along the way to help things be more restful for our faculty and for our students throughout the day. But know that's what we're striving for. And I hope, I'm just wetting your appetite. I'm giving you like the 50,000 foot view. There's so much and it's amazing. And it's needed in the homeschool community and in the classical Christian community. This idea of school is a good balance to the rigor that I think we often feel in education. Um, and so thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for um, sharing this idea. I don't know that it's well represented in our area and I have a passion for that to be represented well. I believe in it that strongly. So thank you for partnering with us. I guess if nothing else, if you've wondered, I don't know. What's school day? Mm -hmm. um, that, that's it in a nutshell. I would encourage you to do more reading and research, and I could talk your ear off, so if you want, I would love to get together and do a little cafe school day, and just sit and talk and drink coffee, um, and talk about this idea. It really is a beautiful thing. Um, so that's what we're striving for here on a Friday. Um, but going back to the idea that it's not idleness, when they come on a Friday, we want it to be restful, but please know we are trying to accomplish things here on a Friday. And that is not going to be effective. We don't have certain expectations for the students. So I know when we had our family interviews, I talked generally about what we expect, but to be honest with you, probably didn't have a clear picture because we hadn't started yet. I knew what I wanted. Now that it started, I think I have a better picture. So I want to make sure that we're on the same page as far as expectations. So if you look in your little packet, it would be the third page. Um, actually, the third and fourth page. So it says school engagement chart on the one side and then school behavior chart on the back. Um, so I just wanted to give you an idea of what our faculty has put together to help us, again, teach from a place of rest, honestly, and learn from a place of rest. Um, we expect certain things of your students, and I know that even the word expectation might rub you the wrong way. Please know that's not our heart, but we found that this is what we need from the students and from the families and from the faculty in order for our program to run smoothly, in order for it to be restful for everyone. So if you look at that sheet, um, you can see, I think I put first the littles, okay? So this is a list of our students, and then the columns are the subjects that they'll go through throughout the day. And I know it's small, but probably the most important thing you wanna focus on is that key down there. So in each of our classes, our faculty, at some point throughout the day are going through and just roughly evaluating the student's engagement and behavior throughout the day. So when we talk about engagement, what we're looking for are these categories. How attentive are they? How prepared are they? How participatory are they? How, what's their contribution like? What's their spirit like? And what kind of effort do we see from them? Um, they're either getting check pluses checks or check minuses and you can see the differentiation there in the key if they are super focused and attentive if they are ready and prepared if they're engaged and participating they're positively contributing to the class they've got a great space they're just this ideal student right the ones that we all want to have and teach and we all hope our children are for somebody else right then those are check pluses um if they're i would say not 
positive but not negative either. They're just kind of there. It's the check. If we're struggling, okay, if we're distracting attention from the teacher, if they're not prepared for class and the things that the supplies that they need, if they refuse to participate, if they're negatively contributing to the class, if they're uncooperative or disruptive, or we see little effort on their part, that's a check minus. Mm. Now please note, that looks so different for the kindergartners than it does for the eighth graders, right? So I'm not talking about how well do they color in the lines and what their handwriting look like. It's not that specific. It's much more of a general spirit that we're sensing about the kids. Um, then they'll get a check minus if they're down there in that category. Please know as a faculty, I, I would love to follow up every day and give you a very specific detailed report on how your children did. I don't know if you're interested in that to that extent, and I have to be honest, I don't know that I can do that specifically with each one, especially not at 3.30 when everybody's coming to pick up at the same time. I am committed to making sure you know about the check minuses. Okay, we had a rough day with your student. Um, that's something I want to communicate to you. I will do my very best to communicate the positives too, because I don't want you to, oh no, there comes Karen again, that means my kid was bad. I want you to know, hey, she had a great day. She really did well. I will do my best, um, but we definitely want to inform you of the check minuses, again, because I hope we're partners in this together. And so if their engagement or lack thereof is making the day unrestful for us, I, I want you to know that so that you can help partner with us to keep that day restful for our faculty, for all of the students, and for your child. Um, generally, if we're seeing those check minus kind of behaviors, they're not in a place of rest. Their little bodies are really struggling, their minds are somewhere else, their heart's not in it, okay? And we want them to be learning from a place of rest. So this is not a perfect system. I'll give you that. This is something that we put together that we are trying just to give us a gauge for your student. Um, you can always check up with me if you want to see how did my kid do in every single class. The faculty's filling this out now every week. We've got a little clipboards of fun that travel around with the class throughout the day. Um, that I'm not trying to hide that information from you. You're always welcome to ask to see that information and follow up with me if, if I don't follow up with you. Um, the other side is behavior. Oh, I forgot to bring my sticks. Oh no, I have sticks. Do the sticks. You probably heard about the sticks. Yeah, I heard about the weekend. Here's some sticks. So not only do we want them to be engaged and participating in what's going on, we need their behavior to a certain extent to conform to our rules and routines, again, so that everything can be restful for, for the whole. So behavior, again, it's the same thing. We've got the students listed and the classes, but the key is different. When it comes to behavior, we're looking at, I would say, three key things. Obedience, respect, and benevolence. So obedience is, are they following instructions? Are they just complying with instructions or are they completely disregarding the instructions that the teacher has given? Um, how much correction do they need throughout the day? We all need reminders, that's fine. But if they're consistent and habitual and repeated. Um, do they respect the rules of the school, the faculty of the school, which would be their authorities for today, and the property of the school? If they're respectful of that, great. If they're apathetic toward it or completely showing contempt, I, I don't care about this, um, then we've got, we have issues. Um, and then how do they engage with their fellow students? Are they encouraging one another and building each other up? That's a call out. We don't want them just to say it, we want them to live that. Um, are they not interacting with their fellow students at all? That, that's a, a sign that we're looking for. Or are they distracting their fellow students from doing good and maybe encouraging them to do wrong? Talking in class, passing notes, those kinds of things. Those are what we're looking for. So it's the same system, check plus, check, and check minus. Where the sticks come in are for the littles because they need a visual representation of this. It's hard for them and especially, I can appreciate, this is new and completely different probably from what you're doing at home. I know you're not making them stand in line. I know you're not making them raise their hand. You're certainly not passing on little popsicle sticks. I get it, and I'm not asking you to. 
but this is a routine that we've come up with. These are rules that we have in place because we're a school and we're not a home school. Um, so things have to function differently. So for right now, in just the little class, the K through two classes where we're focusing, um, there's always a jar of popsicle sticks. Um, the day starts with the reminders of what our rules are. And those are that they're expected to stay in their seat in ready position. They're expected to raise their hand if they have a question or to answer a question or even to go to the bathroom. We need them not just calling out or getting up and walking out. We need them raising their hand, staying in their seat, um, honoring and respecting their authority and treating um, their fellow students with benevolence. We'll review those rules every morning. When they go throughout the classes, these sticks are always in plain sight and available to them. Um, so there's unfortunately more red sticks than there are blue because the red ones are for misbehavior. So we've backed off of just constant reminders, to be honest with you. After six weeks, it's not that they don't know what we expect. It's more of, hmm, are you really gonna like say and do something about what you said you were gonna do? Um, so the reminder comes in the morning, but after that, um, most of our faculty are gracious, to be honest with you, in, in giving gentle reminders. But if it's a constant thing, I'm sorry, you're just here. <laughs> the red stick comes, and it's just set down in front of the student. When there's opportunity during the class, and we're going to pull that one aside, and I say, hey, <laughs> why did you get this red stick? Yeah. And that's actually really important, because I don't want them just going home and saying, I got a red stick, and I don't know what it's for. We need them to own. This isn't me meeting out a punishment. This was your choice in how you were acting. And I know that's really hard for them. None of us like to have to say that, but to admit they're wrong. Then they are physically writing their name on the stick. Mm. Lest we have red sticks, you know, just floating around. Nah, that's not my stick. I don't know what stick it is, okay? Um, nope, your name's on the stick. And then the stick is their responsibility. They have to hold on to that stick. We ask them to put it away because we're not publicly trying to shame them. It's not like a come up to the room and get your red stick, kid. It's, it's quiet, okay? It's um, off to the side. Um, and so they hold on to that red stick until recess. And then it is their responsibility to turn the red stick into the teacher who's in charge of recess. Because a red stick equals five minutes off of recess time. Um, there really is no limit to the number of red sticks that they could get. Um, but we, I've told them last week, if we see an excessive amount of red sticks, um, they'll be calling you. Mm -hmm. It'll come from my phone, but I will, will call you, but that your student, your, I'm sorry, your child needs to talk to you and explain <laughs> what's going on. I don't need that to just be me telling you what your child is doing. Your child needs to own what they're doing. And if and when it comes to that, we'll have to discuss. Is that just a phone conversation? Is that a mom or dad really need to come in and spend the rest of the day? Mom and dad need to come and pick up? It depends on what the offense is, okay, to be honest with you. And it really does depend on what their spirit is. Are they receptive to that correction or are they just digging heels and we're having a bad day? Um, once, oh, I'm sorry, so the red stick, five minutes off of recess. If it is, I would say, a physical <coughs> offense, like they're just really fidgety and they can't stay in their seat and they're just constantly moving and distracting, then usually the five minutes is spent walking some laps because they obviously have some energy <laughs> that they need to get out. Um, if the red stick comes from more of a verbal offense, they're not raising their hand, they're talking to their neighbor, they're distracting, then it's a... Um, more of an isolated spend five minutes on the wall. You don't get to play with your friends. Recess is the time to talk and have fun, but if you're gonna do that during class, then you don't get to participate during recess, if that makes sense. We've said a lot to the kids, reminded them of Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time and a season for everything. Talking isn't bad, having fun with your friends isn't bad, but there's a time and a place for that, okay? Um, so this has worked fairly well. Last week was the first week we brought out the red sticks. Um, especially for the young ones, I think it's effective. Nobody likes getting red sticks. Um, there are other colors in the jar, and those are for good behavior. Um, but what I communicated to the students last week was you're not going to get another colored stick just for doing what you're supposed to do.
There is a, a reward that comes with obedience, but that comes from the Lord. I don't want you to feel entitled that you deserve something just because you did what you're supposed to. Your reward is that then things are restful and you're enjoying the day and participating as you should. But if I see someone going above and beyond, going out of their way to show benevolence to students, being exceptionally engaged and participating, then it's at the teacher's discretion to hand out the other colored sticks and the, the reward for the other colored sticks is yet to be determined. <laughs> um, I have to see what motivates them, honestly. I want to watch them for a little bit more. I think maybe for the youngers it could be prizes, but I'd like it to be more privilege-based. You did really well, and therefore there's a special privilege that comes with that exceptionally good behavior. So, still in process. But I'm sure, you probably have heard about the sticks, didn't you? <laughs> and I'm yeah. sorry that we didn't get to have this meeting before the sticks. Again, know that we're kind of working this out. I would love to go away from the sticks, honestly. Maybe it's a crutch that we need right now as we're learning how to just engage and interact with one another. Um, if we get to a place where we're not wrestling with behavior and engagement, um, we can step away from that. It's, it's a tool to help us to run smoothly. But again, I hope you hear it. The goal is goal life. The goal is restful learning. So this is just a way to help us um, manage that. This is probably a great place to pause. What questions do you have? Maybe clarification. What have you heard from your kids? <laughs> Mrs. Barbara said this. Um, I love those questions. We're not that side. Yeah, you know me. I'm always ask the questions. Ask the way. Okay. So there is. I have a question about how they have to sit mm -hmm. and how they have to hold their pencils. I mean, there's a. <laughs> my girls are not used to. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're very good girls, but they're not used to that much yes. strictness. Yep. Mm -hmm. And although I think it's good for them, mm -hmm. and it's only one day a week. Yep. I'm just wondering the the mentality behind that. Yep. So let's divide that maybe. Pencil hold was something I introduced at the beginning of the year, what we're teaching at Legacy Academy. It is required of Legacy students, the try hold, try hold, try, try group. Um, that's something I'm instilling in the students. I am not gonna be able to change your child's pencil grip in one day a week. That's not my place, that's not my job, that's not my intention. So especially with the younger ones, we start with a pencil pointing at their belly button and we nip and flip and grip. That's how we always start. I do not go around and change their pencil hold. I can't. Um, I mean, the legacy students I do because I'm a teacher. <laughs> but the others I don't. I encourage them, and again, we all do the same thing. Um, but it's not mandated as far as pencil hold is concerned. The ready position we are going to be pretty darn strict on, and I don't make apology for that. We need them sitting in their chair, and we need their hands folded in front of them. That's all ready position is. But I is that in just in the beginning of the day? Nope, that is all classes. Yep. So when the older ones are in here, um, it is <laughs> it's just a, a sitting with hands folded. That's really all it is. Um, Sometimes when they're standing, we have them stand in ready position with their hands behind their back. Again, I hope that you understand. I'm not trying to make little soldiers out of them, but man, it just helps. Then you're not keeping your, you're not fidgeting with your neighbor. You're not pulling on the back of the chair when you're standing behind it. You're not pushing on your neighbor in front of you. It's just a convenient thing for us, to be honest. And then when they're sitting at the table, yep, we want their hands up on the table so we can see that they're not playing with something underneath. Um, I will own, it takes lots of reminders and encouragement for them. I see a lot of homeschoolers um, with any other part of their body except their butt on the chair, to be honest with you. And I go and I seat them and I remind them, ready, position. Um, so if it's just um, a forgetfulness thing, there's not a red stick for that. But if you know intentionally you're supposed to stay in your seat and you're just not, that's when the red stick comes out. But they won't, they won't be punished for not being in ready position, but they will be required and reminded consistently to be in ready position. Does that help? It does. I just, I just worry that it's, you know, I mean, I can see that for the little ones. I worry about that mm -hmm. for the older ones. Well, no, it also depends on what subject they're participating in and what that looks like. 
So for music, they may be standing and they may be singing. So she's going to want them to hold music. They can't be in ready position there. Art class, they're sitting here and they're drawing. They're not in ready position the whole time. Science, when they're participating in a, an experiment, they're obviously that's hands on. But I would say if it's a lecture time of the class, then yeah, we want them sitting in ready position to minimize the temptation for themselves and others to be a distraction, to eliminate that restfulness that we're striving for. I know it's different, and I'm sorry for the flies. No. I know I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like waving my arms, so they're all going to you. I'm <laughs> like being real dry. No, you're okay. You're okay. Um, yeah. Does that help clarify? It does. I think that's one thing that threw them off. You know, that all I heard was we're ready in trouble. Person. We're going to get in trouble. Or not? I said you're not going to get in trouble. It's just that you know everyone needs to be doing the same. It's just like when you go to yes. church. And you put your hands in your lap, and yep. I try to explain that. Mm -hmm. But for for some children, I'm sure it's very difficult. Sure. And so I, I don't think it's impossible, you. though. I will say that. Yeah. Um, and if I came across harsh to your students, if they came home and said, "Mrs. Barbara says we're going to get in trouble, or we might get kicked out," <laughs> yeah. please know that um, I wanted to be clear. That again, something is expected and required of them. I hope I made clear in the interviews, this is not just a co-op. This is our school. And so as the head of Legacy Academy, I'm a gatekeeper for the culture of our school that we are trying to build. And so if we have a whole bunch show up and just disregard those rules, it's really hard for our Legacy students to understand the disparity that they see. So. Yeah, love it or hate it, these are the rules of our school. And again, I hope I made clear we're opening our school to you to come. And that's why I wanted to have this meeting to clarify, no, this is really what I meant. This is what I expect. I understand that that's unique and different, certainly from just a regular co-op scenario. We are going to be more strict. But there is a culture that we're trying to build here at Legacy Academy. And so by inviting you into that, you are welcome to be here but we expect the same things of our homeschoolers that we do of our regular students. So, and again, know that it helps us to be restful and achieve our goal. And that is the goal, but we don't want them anxious about getting in trouble. No, but I would love for their heart to be to follow the rules so we, that we can all enjoy our day together. That's what we're striving for. Um, yes? Mm -hmm. I think another thing is that Jay was like, oh, well, I didn't get a stick, so I Basically, he, he thought uh, the other color sticks mm -hmm. were only for good behavior, and I think maybe just make that clear to yes. him, because okay. he was like, oh, well, I didn't get a stick, but I didn't get a red stick. So he kind of was just like, I don't know, I think that's fine all day. Okay. I think just like put that out there, like, we're sure. for, I also feel like you cannot see when everyone yep. is doing, like, yep. oh, look at that kindness thing. Right. Listen, I think my kid is great, okay? <laughs> but you, you're not going to see when yes. your kid is yep. going to do something. We won't. Like, wow, that was so Christ-like. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was so so I think, I don't know, I don't know if that system, yes. I get it, you're yep. like, I'm trying to tweak it, but like, could you be more clear about what the other color sticks are really for mm -hmm. the kids so that Jay knows? Because sure. I didn't know. Okay, obviously. yes, yeah. we can do that. So I think that that's we important, because I was like, good, I'm so glad you didn't get a red stick today. <laughs> <laughs> that, so would, that would be a goal. Okay, <laughs> the red sticks would equivalent, um, like translate to the check minus, okay, okay. on the chart. Yeah. Um, no sticks are... Checks, I, I think we're doing okay. We're doing what we're supposed to. The check pluses are, man, I really, I can tell. You love it, you're doing really well, you're engaged. I see your heart on display, and I want to publicly praise that. That would be the goal. You're absolutely right, it is hard. Are we doing this perfectly? Nope, and I can clarify it even tomorrow just to make sure they understand. Yeah. Um, just, so you said like the red sticks would be like getting like a check line. So like if my student got like, Red stick, we would be told. I would be told. Yes. Okay. Yep. I mean, I'm sure they're going to tell you, right? Well, <laughs> the other thing we really try to communicate to the students is this is not a once and done, you know, scarlet letter on your chest. You got a red stick, and now the day is awful and ruined. Once that time is served, that red stick goes away, and there is opportunity to start fresh. We want to model God's grace to them. We want to model true forgiveness. There does have to be a spirit of repentance, though, in order for that to happen. Um, so we need them to acknowledge. We need them to seek 
that reconciliation and restitution so that we can, can give it. I hope they know that our faculty love them, and the reason we're being strict is because we love them, and we love the subjects, and we love all coming together. So, yes, imperfectly, we're trying to model Christ. I'm really strict, too, so I don't want to think about it. Is there another thing you can speak away And hopefully Jay never regrets it. But is there anything else you can speak away besides recess? I feel like you're not really safe. And I'm a strict parent at home, so I, yep. I get it. Like, there need to be expectations. Yep. But maybe, like, you know, sometimes you get, give them good snacks. I feel like maybe they didn't get the treat or whatever. I don't know. I don't. Well, possibly. Um, we have removed kids from participating in the fun stuff. Okay. So mm -hmm. if they are not, if they're distracting during the lecture of science, let's say, then they're removed and they don't get to do, they don't get to watch the popcorn. Girls <laughs> dance or whatever it was. There is an element of that. I'll be honest, it's really hard only having your kids one day a week for just this day. There's not as much recourse. Um, but again, I don't want to threaten them. I, I would want them to want the right things, but that takes maturity and, and growth on their part. So we're trying to inspire good behavior as much as we are punishing bad behavior. But I need to make sure that I'm communicating that effectively to them. Yeah. When you're saying bad behavior, is that what you're telling them? Like you're having bad behavior? I just have or, an issue with that. I don't, in our house, we don't say you're being bad. It's like you're not behaving appropriately or something. Yeah, you're not just meeting our expectations. What are our rules? Okay. You, you are not following our rules is what we say. We try to make it very clear. It's not that the teacher is angry or upset with you. It's that you're doing what you're not supposed to or you're not doing what you are supposed to. Again, trying to get them to really own that behavior. Yeah. What is our rule? I have to raise my hand. Okay, did you raise your hand then? No. Okay, well then this is the consequence of it. Not that I'm upset with you because you interrupted my class. Yeah. The other thing is, are you teaching them or practicing their handwriting? We do do handwriting as part of phonics um, okay. every every Friday. The um, question I have is the E, mm -hmm. because we don't make an E the way you're teaching That's them fine. E. Again, I'm not going and to change what that. you're doing so at home. Like, okay, well. Yep. Just know that on a Friday we have to land somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm probably not using the same phonics curriculum that you are at home, but I hope you knew going into it we were going to be doing a spelling bee with your kids on Friday. I hope that was attractive to you, or at least I hope that wasn't hidden from you. So we have to land somewhere. We've chosen a precursive print font because our goal at Legacy Academy is cursive only and cursive first. So I introduce cursive for the littles, they're tracing, and then I encourage them to make their own letters. For, for your kids, it's really just exposure. I, I, I have no expectations that I'm going to make them write a certain way. That's not my goal. But I do think cursive is beautiful and worthy, and so we're going to do a little bit of it on a Friday. Whether you run with that and do it at home is completely up to you. You're the primary educator of your, parent, of your children. Sorry. Yep. I just wanted to say two of our kids have E names, like their name starts with E. Yep. So then they're like, well, she said my E was wrong. Mm -hmm. So then I'm just I wouldn't like, have told okay. them their E was wrong, unless so we're working so, um, on the letter E that week. Like thinking, okay, I didn't know that it's, mm -hmm. so I don't have, I have Sam stuff, but mm -hmm. I don't always know what you're doing on Friday. Well, the so papers always days. come home every week, so you should have a gauge there to put those in their assembly book folder on the other pocket side. So you can always, you should be able to pull that out. It may be stuffed in their back somewhere they're not all good about putting it in the folder so it's nice and neat but yes you can always see that and you can ask if you're if you're curious about something I'm again I'm not trying to hide anything from um, from you Latin would be another example we teach Latin here at Legacy Academy we think it's valuable and so we're introducing your children to that on a Friday I don't know what you're doing at home and quite frankly it doesn't matter because this is what we've chosen to do here so it's just an exposure. There's no assessment to it. We're not requiring them to do something. I think the littles actually love doing the little hat dance. I'm not sure they have any idea what they're actually saying at this point, but they really are loving the little emoji. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So again, that's a springboard. If you want to use that opportunity to go deeper and further with your kids, great, but you don't have to. Um, but these are 
topics and subjects and content that we deem worthy that we're focusing on here at Legacy Academy. So since Friday is just an extension of what we're doing Monday through Thursday, that's why we've chosen the content that we have. We do nature study with our kids Monday through Thursday. We do a little bit of that on Friday. We prioritize great books Monday through Thursday. We're going to do a book club with them Friday. Um, I hope you see how it translates. But maybe because you're only here on a Friday, that's not as clear. Um, that's kind of why I wanted to have those practicum and then talk through and talk through some of those things. Um, yes. Well, but that's not the expectation. It's not that Friday is a continuation of Monday through Thursday. At times it could be review, but it's meant to be a standalone enriching environment. So your students aren't missing out on anything. But I would also ask, don't be offended if it is something that we know we've taught the legacy students and we call on them to maybe explain to everyone. Um, I try to give you an example, maybe like when it comes to phonics, maybe I have taught them a rule on Tuesday, and I know that. So I might call on a legacy student, can you share what rule we were working on this week? But I don't expect your kids to know that, but then I'll take that opportunity to teach everybody that rule, and then we'll apply that rule in our spelling words or vice versa, if that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Um, yep, you are welcome to come. I. I will say I think your presence, mm -hmm. um, it, it's more than just physical, I, I would say that. Um, I think I have seen, maybe I'll have to own that, I, I've seen it go both ways, that when a parent and a teacher are both present, the student struggles to know who the authority is at that time, and we would want to make really clear that the teacher is in charge of that class. And so if mom says, well, you can sit however you want, but the teacher's trying to get everyone to sit together, that becomes competing and confusing. So you are welcome. We would just ask you to observe rather than participate with your student um, and allow the teachers the freedom to act in your stead in local parentis. Um, not, not as that we're replacing you. Yep. Mm -hmm. But yeah, again, you're welcome to come and see all that I've heard. Just stay in the back. Our, especially in that room, I'll own, it's crowded. We don't have yeah, a lot of room with all those kids. Just stay in the back of all the classes the whole day. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. um, okay, we covered the student expectations. Now, real quick, because I said I'd keep it to an hour, and I want to, again, be mindful of your time. What we expect of families, and again, maybe expectation, expectation isn't the right word, but we would want you to communicate with us. Um, certainly, if you have questions or concerns, ask. Um, my information is available to you, my cell phone and my email. At the time, the school still doesn't have a phone line. I did not realize how difficult that would be to set up. Once we get that, we'll publish that. That probably will be the best way, especially if you need to get in touch with us throughout the day. But for now, um, my cell phone is great. Certainly, if you have a grievance, if you have a concern about something, please don't let that fester. Please don't go talk to other parents. Please don't tell your child something that you haven't discussed with us as a school. And I would encourage you, if it's something specific in a certain class or with a certain teacher, go directly to that faculty member. Um, if you feel like your grievance hasn't been appropriately addressed, my door is always open at a, as a head of school. And I'm saying to you what I'm saying to our legacy families as well. This is our policy. Just follow Matthew 18 go directly to the person asking for clarification, go with humility, hey, my kid said this, is that really what happened? Or I don't know how I feel about this. Just go with the humility and seek clarification. Again, we want to partner with you. We want to be on the same page. And if you ever throughout the year feel like you're not, please come communicate with us. Um, support, and I know this gets hairy. We would ask you to support the rules and routines of our school. I, you don't have to agree, you don't have to love it, I get it, but again, so that we can really teach and learn from that place of rest, it goes a long way to having the parents support 
because I know you're not here. So, so knowing that, hey, you know, this is what the teachers expect, that's what I expect of you. That, that will help a lot, and we appreciate your support in that way. Um, participation, as far as parents are concerned, we need to park here for a little bit. Um, let me ask, did you all get my initial email about this? I did. You did? No, I did. You did. And did, how many of you did not see that initial email from me? Okay, I'm no, sorry. It's okay. I got it. Um, I got it. I will, I'll go back and see if it was Swiss cheese for some reason. I apologize for that. We realized very quickly, I'm going to say like week one, that we can't do this alone with 40, 35 kids and just six faculty members on a good day. There's no way we can get done all that needs to be done here at the church. So we put together a schedule and I've included a paper copy. That's the next sheet in your handout. Um, many hands make light work. We're not trying to ask too much of anyone. And honestly, as far as school aid families are concerned, you may be on this list just once or twice throughout the year. We're trying to minimize it, but we would ask on the day that you're scheduled, if you could come at three o'clock, so you're coming early for your kids' pickup, because we usually do the majority of the cleaning and resetting between three and 3.20. It would be really helpful to have parents here. Um, moms who come, I would say we could use you being for better or worse crowd control and quality control um just this kids have their jobs but they're going to need somebody to follow up and make sure that job got done and make sure it got done well dads we could really 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 use some dads help for the heavy lifting these kids can't carry tables and chairs and i don't want them to if they're just going to run into walls with said furniture um so having dads come on those days would be greatly appreciated if you have every friday from 3 to 4 p.m available and you want to volunteer beyond your assigned time i will not turn you away we can use all the help we can get but we would ask at least that you commit to coming on the day that you're assigned um, my secretary i think she did this before she left sent out email reminders you should get it the wednesday before you're scheduled to come on a friday um question sorry yeah okay so that was helpful so like me just coming on Sprint and release because my husband's in yep. work. So I'll just be helping like, okay, yep. let me check what you're Yep, whatever. so basically we have three I'm buildings. There's a fact, don't stress. Um, there's three buildings. We have a faculty member in charge of each building and the kids are divided up. They have their chores. It's actually all written out in a very detailed document by a wonderful parent of the school and a member of the church. Um, so you would be given a paper copy which has pictures of what the room should look like and a checklist of what needs to be done in each room. Okay. Basically, we would just send you to a building, introduce you to that faculty member, hand you a list, and just say, make sure this gets done, please. As far as a mom, because we know many of you might be coming with other kids and that's fine. Um, if you can come completely free and jump in with both hands, that, that's how too, but just keeping them on task and making sure the jobs get done. That's really what we're looking That's for. Awesome. For the moms. I, was yeah. like, I was like, if they ask me to clean anything, at least it's going to be on my back. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Oh, and honestly, we have a good number of students, and I will say they've been hard workers, and we really appreciate that. They're eager to pitch in and help out. I hope they do that at home too, but maybe it's just because it's not home. They're eager to jump in and help out. It's just making sure that the job gets done well. Um, we try to communicate to them we're stewards of this facility it's provided to us free of charge by the church so we want to leave it and that's a call out better than we found it um and so we just need to make sure of that so that's really where parents come in um, on a friday i am working right now to put together a whole directory of all the legacy families and all the school aid families i'll email that so that way you have contact information if you're not able to if you know you're going to be out of town between Thanksgiving and Christmas in your schedule, if you could find someone to swap or take your place, that would be really helpful. So we don't have to arrange that. You can inform us of that. I would say worst case scenario, if you know you can't be the, on, here on the day that you're scheduled, at least give us a heads up so we know. Um, and coming at 3 is very helpful. I know it's extra early, but if you show up at 3.30 when you come to pick your kids up, to be quite honest, the vast majority of the work will already be done. There is a certain amount after 3.30. <laughs> if you're not on the list, please pick your kids up as soon as possible, because we basically, while the weather's nice, are going to kick them out of the building and literally lock the door 
doors behind them so that we can vacuum in here. It's like brushing your teeth while eating Oreos to try to clean really well with them still in the building. So we need them to leave so that there's a little bit of the fine cleaning that can be done after everyone has left. I will own it's not a perfect system. We're doing the best we can as we figure this out. Um, and the goal would be scolé, though that seems impossible in a clean room. <laughs> We want it to be restful and enjoyable to a certain extent, and I think the more people we have involved it will really help us achieve that. I hope you just know too that like people who are coming with kids, I hope you see like my heart in yeah. there. I'm going to try my best yes. too. Yep. I hope you see yes. that too, just with yep. like yes, because I'm like I, I feel bad because like I would be in there, but yeah, with my yep. two with me. I understand. Participation is going to look different for all of us in our ages and stages of life. Absolutely. So we just ask that you you do partner with us, whatever whatever that. Looks um, school activities, I think I communicated during the um, interview, you are welcome to come to legacy events. Um, I want to talk specifically about the Christmas program. Um, I want you to know that already part of the music class on a Friday is preparing for our Christmas program. Um, I understand as Homeschoolers, I cannot require you to participate in that. I would want you to hear me say I would like to strongly encourage your child to participate. If you are available that Thursday night, we would love to have your family participate. Let me say this, and I hope you hear my heart in this too. If you can't participate, that's fine. Please don't communicate to that to your children and have them come on a Friday and communicate to the whole class that I'm not going to be here on that day and so I don't need to sing these songs and it doesn't matter. That, that's subversive to a certain extent and I know that's not your intention, but maybe if you could just let them go for this whole time thinking they're going to be in the Christmas program and then mom, I learned these great Christmas songs and I don't know what they're for. That's fine. I would rather have that than us have them not engaged in that music class. It's not the entire music class, it's not every week, but it is a good part of even the Friday curriculum. If nothing else, even if you don't end up singing in the program, then you'll be blessed by their rendition of Silent Night. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes? Are you gonna resend that email then? That, that I guess that has the information With this? on the Christmas program? No. no, that was all part of, did we never do a family interview because of Maybe a lot of your questions will be answered. <laughs> if we meet that, it should have been included in the packet of information that you got um, with the handbook and the dress code. Oh, I have that. So okay, it should, should be in there. Yep, the okay. school calendar. And it's probably on my calendar. I just want to make um, sure it is it. Thursday, December 18th. Okay. Somebody wants to verify that the 18th is indeed a Thursday. Um, and it's at 7 o'clock, and it's here okay. at the school. Okay. Um, yeah, just having them come and fully participate will really help our music teacher. Um, even if you don't intend for them to participate, again, that's fine, but make sure they understand when they come, we expect them to fully participate in the Friday morning practice for the program. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I hope you hear my heart in that. It would, it'll really help. Um, and you have what, I want you to know we love you and we want you to come and you're welcome to participate. Um, probably the next big event would be Reformation Day, which is Monday, October 31st. We are canceling classes that day. It's going to be a day of just celebration. Um, to be honest with you, it's the end of our first quarter, which we're going to celebrate as a school. Um, but it's Reformation Day, the day that Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of the Church of Wittenberg, Germany in 1517. Nobody celebrates that anymore. And I think we're losing our church history. So I want to make sure that we celebrate the right things as a school and Legacy Academy. I want our students to know their church history. I want them to know the names and the stories of the church fathers that they stand on the shoulders of. So we're pausing our classes that day to celebrate Reformation Day. And you'll be welcome to join us on that day. Um, we're going to ask everybody to come in medieval costumes. We're going to do games and activities. We're going to do a medieval feast that day. It will be helpful to know so we can plan on extra numbers. Um, but again, you're welcome to participate, but we would ask for full participation and engagement. If you come or your students come on that day, we would just want you to jump right into what we have planned for that day. So I'll be sending out um, emails with details about that, but you'd be welcome to come 
um, and then the Christmas party is a really big thing. Any other questions about school activities? Um, partnership, I wanted to end here. Again, I hope it goes without saying that we're on the same page. We want the same things for your kids. Thank you for entrusting them to us. I know that you have options and choices. You don't have to put your kid in this program. I know that. Um, and we're honored and humbled that you have chosen to. So thank you for that. Um, I would just leave you with two opportunities to really communicate your heart and your partnership with us. Please pray with us and for us. Um, I think you know this is a hard task that we've undertaken, starting a brand new school and a completely unique program that honestly doesn't really have a lot of framework to run off of. Um, please pray for us. Please partner with us in lifting up our faculty, especially in the administration and our school board. Um, we covet those prayers. We need them. We can't do this in our own strength. So the more people that are praying with us and for us, the better. And then your last page is... Um, called Faculty Favorites. I'm gonna make a shameless plug for my faculty. They are amazing, they are awesome, they are working tirelessly for our legacy students and your children on a Friday. Um, so we just asked them, they weren't happy about it, but I said, no, tell me everything that, <laughs> all the personal information about them. So you, you now know their birthday, their wedding, their favorite color, food, beverage, restaurant, shopping, sports teams, and birds. <laughs> um, again, to pray more specifically, take a faculty member every Friday, maybe, and lift them up specifically. And then if the Lord lays it on your heart to be a physical or monetary blessing to our faculty as head of school, please, please do that. They work so hard, and they're, they are laborers worthy of their hire, but I can't pay them enough. And so I think to hear directly from parents that you appreciate the ministry and the investment that they're giving in your children, that that would speak dividends to them. So um, I'm just going to leave it there. We don't have a formal like PTO. We're not that big. We don't need that. But you have this information. Do with it what you want. Um, it would be great maybe if a couple of parents got together and um, celebrated. I'll be sending out, I would like to do a teacher appreciation week at some point throughout the year. So I'll get that ball rolling as an administrator through email, and then let's just look for ways to be a blessing to one another. If you like. Are there yeah. emails, all, there are teachers emails also in that welcome tab? Um, Do you have that as a school? I yet? can include that. It's always their first initial and their full last name at legacyacademyde.org, but I can include that. Mm -hmm. That's a good I way to, to, yep, to contact them. Mm -hmm. um, what else? What other questions do you have? I think that's all I have. I feel like I talk all day. You do. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming out. Um, this will. This session was recorded awkwardly. I've been staring at myself all night long. Um, and will be available on our YouTube channel. Not necessarily for you, but we are going to ask the other families who weren't able to attend right now to watch that video so this information will be available if you need to go back and reference it. Certainly reach out if you have any other questions or concerns throughout the year. So let's close in prayer and be dismissed. God, thank you so much for all that you have done to bring Legacy Academy into being. This year, that in and of itself is an amazing accomplishment. And we, I want to pause and, and praise you for that, God. You know, it's a desire of my heart. And it's a unique opportunity we have to share that with the homeschool community. So thank you for making school ladies a possibility this year as well. Thank you for bringing these families, so many I just met for the first time this year. Thank you for broadening our mission um, through these families. Thank you for the students that we have the opportunity to interact with every week. God, I pray that you would take our feeble efforts. We're learning and we're growing, um, but take our work and multiply it, God. And I pray that you would do exceedingly abundantly for all that we could ask for you this year. I pray that you would work mightily through these students, shape and mold their hearts, capture their attention, um, arrest their attention on you, God. And again, I have no idea what you have planned for these little ones, but I pray that they will be sharp arrows wherever you choose to shoot them into the world, God. Help them to be prepared and ready. Help them to know what they believe and to love you, God. And I pray that their time here at school days on a Friday would just be... Um, 
would be helpful in that respect for preparing them for their own vocation. And thank you for, again for these families. Thank you for the parents who are partnering with us. And I pray that you would bless our endeavors, God. Um, help us to rest in you as we strive um, to honor you by educating our children now. That's a windy task. And we are so inadequate to do that. But God, help us to rest. Help us to find joy in what we do. Help us to love our students, love our children, and to love you, God. We pray all of us in your son's name.